Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Thinking in Systems Level 5, Simulating Systems. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a simple physical simulation of a system. Up to this point, we've always defined the system to start, and we'll continue doing that. Um, a system, remember, is a group of components that are interacting together. What will make this video different is that we're going to try to use a series of buttons, switches, and cubes to create a simulation. A simulation is simply a set of logical rules that we can kind of put at play and see how the system operates over time. So I'm going to put this up here. We'll get to that in a second. After watching this video, you should be able to create a simple simulation of a thermostat in a heater or a thermostat in your body. Uh, but we're going to start uh, by me just showing you my thinking as we create a simple simulation for a useless box. Um, after we've done that, then I'll give you a feedback loop that you'll try to do on your own. So as always, the first thing we should do is we should define the system. So in this case, the system is the useless box. The way the useless box works is that when I turn it on, it will just simply turn it off again. So when I turn the switch on, there's a me mechanical monster on the inside. It's simply turning that switch off. So that's going to be the system that we're going to try to simulate. And so this uh, whiteboard is going to represent the system. Um, I should define what are the important parts of the system before we try to simulate it. The two things that I see as being very important in this simulation would be... The two things that I see at the beginning is the switch and then the mechanical monster. And th so they're both in an off position. When I turn the switch on, that turns the monster on. So a way for me to represent that is to use an arrow. And this is a positive relationship. So for me to go over that again, the switch is in an off position. When I put it in an on position, that turns the monster on. Now what is the monster doing? The monster when it's turned on, is going to turn off the switch. And so that's a negative relationship. So when this one goes on, then that's going to turn this one in the off position. Let's just keep watching the simulation. Well, now it's in an off position. And so that should turn this one off, which would turn this one on. And so I've got some problems here with the simulation. So it looks like there has to be something to tell the monster to turn off or not. And so a way to do that is to put an if statement. So I could say, if the monster is on, then turn the switch off. But if the monster is off, then stop. So this is just some logic. Let's see how this works with the useless machine. So I'm going to turn the switch on. So that would create a on on the monster. Now I've got an if statement. So if it's on, then there'd be a negative relationship here. So that's going to turn this one off. That's going to turn this one off. And now since we've got it in an off position, then the whole thing's going to stop. So now I have a simulation. Now this would be a physical simulation. You could create a mathematical or a computational one as well. So let me clean this off and then let me give you a different uh, system that I want you to try to simulate. Okay, for the second system, what we're going to look at is two phone feedback. And so this is my phone and my wife's phone and they're on a, a audio call between each other. Let me turn the speaker on. And you can see what happens. So we're getting feedback between the two phones. And so let me stop. And so what I'd like to have you do is model what you think is going on with two phone feedback. Um, let me identify the components so that we're kind of on the same page. Then I would encourage you to pause your video and uh, let's compare our thinking. Okay, so the important things that I noticed is that it didn't happen until we turned both speakers on. So I've included both my speaker and Laura's speaker and then both of our microphones. So what I'd encourage you to do is draw, how does this thing work? Uh, what's connected to what? And then we'll try to simulate this uh, once we come back together. 
Okay, if I were to draw connections, uh, the first thing is that when I'm speaking into my microphone, that is um, going to Laura's speaker. And so we would call that a positive relationship. If I increase my volume into the microphone, that increases the volume coming out of the speaker. Now, where does the sound come out of the speaker? It's gonna go back to my microphone. So there's a positive there. And there's also gonna be a positive to uh, Laura's microphone itself. So we're gonna get a positive feedback there. If we look at the other way, let's look at Laura's microphone. So Laura's microphone, if she speaks into it, the volume is going to increase my volume. So there'd be a positive relationship there. When sound comes out of my speaker, it's gonna go back to Laura's microphone, but it's also gonna go to my microphone as well. And so when you're creating a simulation like this, you can just use different color to represent the amount of volume. So this this red dot or red cube represents the volume in my microphone. Let's go to Laura's speaker. So Laura's speaker is going to increase. So an increase in this leads to an increase in that. We're also going to increase um, the sound in going into Laura's microphone, but it also feeds back to my microphone. Um, Laura's microphone, an increase in that, increases uh, the volume in my speaker which feed back to my microphone, which feeds back to Laura's microphone. And this whole thing is just gonna keep going and going and going. So we're gonna get way more volume in all of these. And as a result, we get that feedback that we saw. And so this is how you do um, just simple simulations. We've done it with common day objects. What I would encourage you to do now is try one of the Google Slides below. I've got one on the thermostat in a heater, or you could do an internal thermostat. How do we regulate our body temperature? That's a simulation. It's just setting up some rules of a system and then letting it go. Uh, we did physical simulations. Um, a lot of mine are based on a computational model called Loopy. I'll put a link to that uh, down below. But the best way to learn this is to try it, let it run, and then fix your uh, simulation over time. So that's system level five simulations, and I hope that was helpful.